another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to deploy a random forest module or in a scikit lane module into Flask. So in this case, we are going to use our module created in, in the previous video to, to predict house prices, but this time we are going to deploy it into a Flask web application. So as we have remember, we have, I have created, I have created this random forest module. So in order to deploy the module, I must first save my module into, into my lock, into my local disk. So to do that, I imported job lib. And then to, to save my, the module into, into, into my local disk, I then dumped the module using the dump function. Then I passed in my module and then I passed in the name of the module that I want to be, to be saved into the disk. And then as you can see, the module is then saved in, into, into the disk. So as you can remember, when we were predicting house prices, we used different features. We used like the rooms, bathroom, length size, latitude, longitude, distance, car, length size, and building area to, pray, to train our module and then to predict, and then to predict the price based on these different features. So we are going to use these features. We are going to use these features to predict the price the price, the house price. So, so, so the next, so the next thing is this is my pro project structure. So here I have templates. So templates are just views. So this is going to be our user interface, which will allow our user to enter, to enter, to enter commands into our, into our web application. And then I then have the model, which is the house price model, which I saved from my Jupyter notebook. And then the next thing is going, the next thing is the CSS, which I'm going to use to style, to style my module. Then the next thing is the app, the Python, this Python file, which is going to contain different libraries, such as Pandas, Flask, and Joblib. So this is the project structure. So to deploy my web application. So the first thing is I created a user interface using HTML. So these are these are the forms which which the user is going to enter the the to enter our features. So yeah, this is going to be an input form for rooms. This is going to be an input form for bathroom, input form for length size, and then for latitude, longitude, distance, car, and so forth. And then we have this we have this div here. So this is going to display different, this is going to dif display predictions made by our module. So, so the next thing is I'm going to, this is the, the, this is our Python file, which is going to have Flask, and then which is going to have our module. And this is where predictions are going to happen. So we are going to use Flask to create a local server. So what we, what is going to happen is when our user enter, enters details into our user interface, those those features are going to be sent to our server, let's say our local server via what we call, it's going to be a request. So we are going to send a request to our model and then our model run inference or predictions. And then our model will then send back, will then send back a response and then that response is going to be displayed to our user interface as predictions. So here I I imported Flask and then I imported Pandas, which we are going to use for data pre-processing. Then I imported Joblib so that I could load my module into 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 our web application. So to do that, I I then opened our my module and then I then saved I then saved the module into this variable f and then here yeah, well and then we are going to load the module from we are going to load the module and then the next thing is we are going to create an instance of the flask of the flask class so then we are going to pass in this name and then we are going to pass in the template folder. So this template folder is this template folder is our main.html, which is going to be our user interface. So we are going to pass it in into our into our 
instance. The next thing is we are going to create this route, this route, and then we are going to pass in methods, which is the get and then the post. So the post is used, let's say when our user interface enters data into our into our form. The data is then is then sent to the server via a post. And then to get a, res a response, we then use the get method. So if you guys are not familiar with this, this is a REST. This is a REST API. You can go on Google and then search for REST API. And then the next thing I did was I created a function, which is the main function. And then in this main function, the first thing we do is we check if our request. So we check if our request that we are going to make to our server or to our module is a get. So if our request is a get, then we are going to then we are going to return. We are going to return this this user interface, the, our HTML, our HTML file, which is the main .html. But if our request is a post, so that means that we are going to send a, a request to our server. We then we then retrieve our we then retrieve, retrieve this data from our HTML form. As you can remember, this we created HTML forms so that our user can enter like the number of rooms, then like the bathroom and then the length size. So yeah, well, we are now retrieving. We are now retrieving those the values from that our user entered from from the forms. So here we are going to retrieve the rooms, the bathroom, and then the length side. So in order to retrieve this, you, you should make sure that this this value rooms matches this value, matches the name in our input form. These two should match, otherwise you would get an error. And then the next thing is. After we've done that, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to we are going to create a, our input variables, and then we are going to use pandas to create a data frame, and then we then pass in we then pass in our our values that we retrieved from our forms. The next thing is we are then going to create a columns in our in our data frame. So these columns should correspond to the data that we retrieved from our form from our HTML form. And then the next thing you are going to specify the data type, which is going to be a float. And then the next thing is going, we are going to specify the index as input. So the next thing is we are going to make predictions. So here, yeah, the predictions, we are going to make predictions and then we are going to pass in the input variables that we got from our HTML form to our module so that our module, so that our module can, can, pretend, can, can, can make predictions. The next thing is we are going to print predictions. And then the next thing here, we are going to return, we are going to return Flask, and then we will render our we render our our user interface or our, our our template. And then we are going to create a dictionary, which is going to be original input. So here we have the room, we are going to so the rooms will correspond to the number of rooms, bathroom to bathroom and then length size to length size. So the reason why we will pass this to the to the original input is we are going to loop through. We are going to loop through these values and then we are going to display them on our user interface. And then we then pass in, we then create a variable result and then we and then we create this variable result to our, we then set this variable result to our predictions. So this variable result that we, we set to our predictions we are going to retrieve this variable to our user interface. So you make sure that every variable that you you pass through the render template is we can retrieve this value via our our HTML. So once we have done that, I have created this div, and then I clicked created this class result. So and then this syntax is called Ginger. Uh, it's a Flask syntax that you can use to pass in. To pass in variables and then so you can pass in your Python logic into into this syntax. So you can check out the the Flask documentation. You just Google Ginger Python and then it will it will show you. So here we are going to specify if if the result and then we are going to look through the variable. We are going to look through the variable 
and the value in our in our dictionary and then we are going to we are going to print out the variable the variable let's say price and the predicted let's say the variable is price and then we are going to print out here the value of the of the price and then the next thing is we are going to to display the predicted house price and then and then here in, in this paragraph we are going to display the result so so that's how you that's how you deploy your 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 sklearn or a random forest module into a into a flask web web application so to run this application you first you first start the user the command line and then we just type python up to pi as you can see now our server our server our server is on so and then our our server is running on local was on port 5000 so so let's put local host and specify the port for so I don't know why it's taking long, but it should have. Okay, guys, let's restart the server. Okay, so the application is that. So let's say we want to predict the house price for a house with 12 rooms, let's say with three bathrooms. Let's say the land size is, let's say, 5,000 square meter. Then latitude, let's say, is 7. And then the longitude is 144. And let's say the distance is 145 kilometers. And then the number of cars, let's say, is 3. And then the land size, let's say, 7,800. Then building area, let's say, is just, let's say, 10,000 square meters. Then the year in which the house was built, let's say, also was built in 2016. And then let's let's submit. So as you can see, guys, we have created our model. We have we have created a web application that predicts house prices using our scikit-learn library. I hope this video helped you a lot, guys. So I challenge you to to look for a different to look for a different data set on Kego or any other platform, and then you can then do data pre-processing and then you can then model model evaluation and then you I challenge you to create your own web application guys. So if you've done so you can once you've done so you can you can put the links in the description below so that I can I can see what you've done guys. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helps you a lot. So may you do me a favor by hitting the like the like button and the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.